philosophy that is an animal worshiping type philosophy yep. that commands to abstain from meats. Not just saying, oh, well, I don't eat meat, but the one that tells you not to eat meat and the one that tells you that the Bible teaches you not to eat meat. The Bible calls that a doctrine of devils. What the fuck? Why do carnivores exist? Evolution? Circle of life? The existence of carnivorous predators in the world can be simply explained away as the circle of life. But that's only limited to the surface, to the finite, to the earthly temporal realm. It does not answer any deeper philosophical questions, such as why are some animals born bloodthirsty carnivores? The spiritually minded might also then ask, why would a merciful God create such predators in the animal kingdom that cause such suffering to their prey if the original intent was a plant-based herbivore diet on Earth? We have one explanation that God simply decided to change his mind one day and amend his most important commandment from thou shalt not kill any other sentient being to what the hell, here's a list of tasty animals for you to kill and eat. Oh, and by the way, keep those animal sacrifices coming. Now this train of thought veers into a really deep rabbit hole. We've got the Luciferian Rebellion, Fallen Angels, the Flood, the Ark. Which begs another question. What the hell did the animals eat if all the plants were gone? And how did they not go extinct with all the humans eating the animals? But let's just stick to the philosophies and explanations that might show a deeper meaning while also examining the question. Why is there suffering on Earth? Ah, Pythagoras. Who was he? Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher, mathematician, musician, and what some might today call an animal whisperer. He was known as the father of numbers, best known for what's now called the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagoras believed that the soul was immortal, and that after death, it transmigrated into other bodies, including those of animals, as a natural cycle of reincarnation. He believed the only allowable killing of sentient beings was in self-defense. One of his most well-known doctrines was that all animal beings are of the same family. He regarded all living beings as kindred spirits and was opposed to animal sacrifice, a very popular practice in his day. He abstained from eating flesh and advocated a vegan diet for ethical reasons. Of all the vegetables, he valued beans the most for their digestible and eliminative qualities. He believed animals had special kinship with human beings because of their shared ability to feel emotions such as pleasure and pain. This philosophy was decimated when the French scientist René Descartes came along in the 1600s with his theory that animals could not feel pain or anxiety and could not suffer because they did not possess a soul. This view that animals were merely machines allowed for their mistreatment which was then sanctioned in law and societal norms. The crux of this belief is still held on to even today, some four centuries later. According to his teachings, the existence of carnivores can be explained by the transmigratory process of souls. That is, each human must go through incarnations as both a predator and as the hunted, in both animal and human form. In the incarnation as a wild beast, each individual is, is expected to work through unresolved, violent impulses carried over from previous lives. And in becoming the persecuted, one would hope that empathy would be gained for those they once harmed. In our brief lives as animals, we are unaware of good or evil, acting solely upon instinct. But, in human form, we are given the capacity to comprehend and choose not to harm others. This spiritual evolution is unlike the theory of Darwin's physical evolution, which upon close examination is actually not only racist, but speciesist. There is no gradually ascending order in Pythagoras' reincarnation. In other words, a life as a human could be followed by that as an animal in no particular order. In fact, it is highly possible that the winged creatures of the air or the ones in the ocean could be more spiritually evolved than those in human form. This planet is basically the ash can of the universe. It is a training ground. In this spiritual cleansing, learning, and evolution process, some can become trapped in purgatorial cycles of either predator or victim. Only when they let go of base emotions like pride and self-pity can they ascend to higher levels of consciousness. Unfortunately, the learning process for all of us down here on Earth sometimes involves what we call suffering. But as this quote from Friedrich Nietzsche shows, 
That which does not kill us makes us stronger. It's like working hard and getting a great reward. And at some point, after we have learned every lesson there is to learn on Earth, we can look forward to never having to suffer again. Came through the tunnel, blinded it, blue sky.